Are you listening? Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Hi guys, it's Miss Hampton. Uh, we're going to be talking about graphing and equations and kind of connecting those things together today. Um, so go ahead and title your page, Graphing and Equations. And hopefully you have some graph paper or grid paper um, handy. If you don't, see if you can draw a grid on there. You're going to need at least 10 by 10. Um, if you have trouble drawing some, see if you can Google grid paper, print some out, cut it and glue it. Um, so go ahead and pause the video, take care of that. This is kind of going to be the setup that you need for this page. All right, so when you're ready, um, we are going to look at some relationship tables like we did last week and how that connects to the graphing that we've been talking about the last couple of days. Um, so we did some relationship tables with two different types of equations. We did um, an equation with a multiplicative rule, like 2 times x. And we did equations with additive rules, like x plus 2. Um, so we should be pretty practiced now at making an input-output table with these rules. So I've got a table with the input, or the x, and the output, or the y. So if I wanted to use the numbers um, for x, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and I'm going to add one more, 5, um, if I follow my rule, which is to take the x value and multiply it by 2, I would end up with values like 0, when x is 1, y equals 2, when x is 2, y equals 4, 6, 8, and 10. Okay. I can come down to my graph, and I can actually use this table as um, points to plot on my graph. So this would look something like this point would be the x is 0, so I put a 0 first, and the y is 0, so I put a 0 second. This point would look like x is 1, y is 2. So it's basically like putting a comma and some parentheses around this. So I can fill in the rest of them. These are the points I want to use. If you plot these points, you're going to see a pretty cool pattern happen. So I'm going to get my, um, my grid set up. You're going to need, like I said, at least 10 for your x-axis and your y-axis. So I drew my x and y 10 across. You can number them if you want to, or if you just want to count, that'll work too. So there's my x and my y. All right, so we want to plot these points on here. Remember, it always goes x first, then y, or over and then up. So I'm going to start my pattern by plotting these points 0, 0, 1, 2, over 2, up 4, then I'm here over 3, up 6, over 4, up 8, and over 5, up 10. Should see a pattern with your points. If we connect those, it should make a nice straight line. You can use a ruler if you're a perfectionist or just eyeball it. All right, so you should notice some patterns about that. Uh, my rule is times two. I notice that every time I go over one on my x-axis, I go up two. That pattern might change if I multiplied by something different. That's something we'll explore in class. Um, if I was to do an additive rule, like this one, I get a totally different table. Uh, so I'm going to change colors so my line will look different. You can do that if you're into that. This input-output table would look a little bit different. I'm going to use the same inputs for x. So I'm still going to make my x's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. But with my rule being plus 2 instead of times 2, my y values are going to be a little bit different. My outputs are different. So I can take my x of 0 and say 0 plus 2 is 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. 2 plus 2 is 4, and on and on and on. All right. 
I've got a new set of points to plot. They're a little bit different this time. Again, these are just like putting a comma and some parentheses around your input-output table. It's going to give you a little point to plot. Five, seven. All right, so take your new color or your same color, whatever. Uh, plot these points, and we're going to see a different line happen. It's going to look very different than what we had before. So this one is 0, 2, 1, 3, 2, 4, 3, 5, 4, 6, and 5, 7. So I've got a really, really different line happening this time. So some different things to notice about this line. Instead of going over 1, up 2, over 1, up 2 like it did when I multiplied, this time it's just up, over, up, over. It always goes up by 1. So what I'm looking for is I could see the 2 when I did the multiplicative pattern. It went up 2 every time. So where is the 2 on this one? Well, the 2 is right here. I can see it crosses my y-axis right here at 2 because I said plus 2. If I was to change that to plus 3 or plus 4, maybe that would change. That's something we can explore in class. All right, so what I want you to try um, over on your left side, I'm going to give you just one multiplicative pattern and one additive pattern to try graphing on the other side. So over here, for you to try on your own, I want you to try graphing y equals 4x. Let's see what happens with that. You can use the same um, x values that I used over on the notes side. You just use 0 through 5, or if you want to do more than that, you certainly can. Um, and then your additive pattern that I want you to try is y equals x plus 4. See how those turn out? Maybe jot down some thoughts about how that compares with these um, patterns that we did over on the right-hand side. Damn.